For several years, NASA's spaceship Kepler was wandering through space. It studied more than 150,000 stars across the galaxy. This search had a specific goal – to find planets that are similar to Earth. These planets might become our second home, but it'll happen only in the distant future when humanity begins to colonize space. The mission was successful. Kepler found loads of planets that got called super-Earths. In our solar system, there's not a single planet that can be called super-Earth. Some scientists think it may be hidden somewhere on the edge of our system, but nobody has found direct evidence of this. A super-Earth sounds impressive, but in fact, it's unlikely to look anything like our planet. All over the universe, there are many such supers. To become a super-Earth, a planet must weigh from 1 to 10 times the mass of our planet. It also has to be twice its size and powered by a star's energy. That's all the criteria. The surface of such a planet may be rocky or gaseous or even mixed. Imagine living on such a planet. It's the same as ours, with similar atmosphere, climate, and landscape, but several times larger. Our lives are different here. Because of the increased mass, the gravity on this planet is much stronger. There are no high mountains or trees in this world. Everest is several times smaller. Most trees don't grow higher than a single-story building. People are also more compact. It's difficult for the body to grow tall when gravity presses on it with double or triple force. The average height of a grown-up is 3 feet. There are almost 8 billion people on Earth today. In large cities, people feel quite crowded. But on the super-Earth, the area is twice larger. People are smaller, too. They drive small cars and live in small houses. That's why there's much more space. The air is cleaner, and not all parts of this planet are fully explored yet. Days and nights here last longer than on good old Earth. Today is Monday, and Tuesday will start in 48 hours. But people still don't have enough free time. Working hours are longer now, and people need more time to sleep, rest, and commute. But the cool thing is that now people are much stronger and more resilient. If an ordinary person gets to the super-Earth, they will feel as if they're carrying a heavy backpack filled with bricks. Their muscles won't be used to hauling such a load at all times. Even during sleep, they'll feel heavy. In an unprepared person, this pressure can damage bones and muscles and lead to unpleasant consequences. But since people have been living on the super-Earth for thousands of years, they've evolved and adapted to the new conditions. On this planet, human bones are as strong as iron. Muscles are as hard as a rock. People are small but powerful creatures. But they don't know about their own strength. Everything around them is heavy, and this is the norm. Trees are sturdier, and their wood is more durable, which means the furniture is more massive. A single sheet of paper on the super-Earth can weigh 10 times more than the ones we're used to. The average passenger car can weigh as much as two fire trucks, and a teaspoon is heavier than a dumbbell. But since the weight of all vehicles is greater than that on our planet, people need more power and fuel to reach higher speeds. They use a lot of gasoline. Much more resources are needed to send rockets into space. It takes more fuel to overcome the gravity of super-Earth and leave its atmosphere. Spacecraft also have to weigh less. When everything is so heavy and dense, you don't feel super strong. But let's say you're a resident of the super-Earth and decide to visit good old Earth one day. You become a superhuman here. You can come up to any car, put your hands against its trunk, and start moving it. In the gym, you can easily lift any weight. With one strike, you can leave a crack in a concrete wall or punch through a wooden board. All of this looks extremely impressive, considering your small stature. Your legs, used to heavy loads, feel so light here. You can easily jump from one roof to another. If you accidentally fall from a two-story building, your body won't receive any serious damage. Your skin won't be scratched, your bones will easily withstand the fall. On Earth, you become a superhero. Unfortunately, a super-Earth with the conditions perfect for humans hasn't been found yet. These planets are still poorly understood. They can even pose a danger to people. A large mass means a huge amount of energy, and this energy needs to be released. If we lived on the super-Earth, volcanic eruptions would be as common as thunderstorms. The increased gravity could also cause more tectonic plates movement. The landscape and the planet's crust would be very unstable. Imagine earthquakes waking you up every day. Such conditions would encourage people to develop a great sense of balance. There would also be special technologies strengthening house foundations. 
frequent shifts of tectonic plates would trigger huge tsunamis. Oceans would constantly change their shape. Vast areas of land would get flooded. In such changing conditions, people would never be able to build permanent cities and live comfortably. Plus, if people ever came here, it'd be difficult for them to fly away because of the planet's powerful gravitational force. Space objects flying past the super-Earth would be more likely to fall on the planet. In addition to volcanic eruptions and earthquakes, there would be frequent meteor showers, and those wouldn't be just tiny rocks that evaporate in the atmosphere. Huge asteroids could be thrown off their course by the planet's gravity. People would have to build a machine that could destroy meteorites before they enter the atmosphere. But even if they succeeded, hundreds of chunks of space rock would still fall on the super-Earth. After all these catastrophes, people would most likely understand that there's only one super-awesome Earth, and it's our home planet. The worst thing that can happen to Earth is the hardening of its core. As soon as it stops working, the planet will lose the shield that protects it and us from space radiation. Solar storms and blasts of energy can create serious problems for people. All electronics will stop functioning normally. The internet, power plants, traffic lights, computers, airplanes, you name it. To survive in such a place, people would have to live under a huge dome. It wouldn't allow radiation and meteorites to pass through. But many super-Earths have conditions that are even tougher than that. For example, there's a planet where the air temperature is so high, metals get vaporized there. It's unlikely any life forms can appear in such a place. But if people had to evolve there, our species would be invulnerable. Imagine creatures covered in skin that's stronger and more elastic than any material on Earth. Walking through fire would be as ordinary to them as breathing air. The inhabitants of this world would probably try to take over other planets. The only thing they wouldn't be able to withstand would be low temperatures. A light, warm breeze would seem like an ice-cold gust of wind to them. There's another super-Earth similar to this one. It receives tremendous amounts of energy from the nearest star. Because of this, the temperatures there are so high they even destroy molecules. In the depths of space, scientists have found another super-Earth. It's two and a half times the size of our planet and is completely covered with water. There's not a single patch of land on it. The planet is super heavy. That's why it's tilted a bit to the side. When this super-Earth rotates on its axis, water flows from one side to another. Massive, destructive tsunamis are a common occurrence on this planet. If people lived there, they would look more like amphibians than humans. Another super-Earth is six light-years away from us. Its mass is three times that of our Earth. It takes the planet about 233 days to orbit its star. This planet receives only 2% of the star's energy. The surface of this world is a dark place, covered with ice. One of the most amazing planets out there seems quite friendly and potentially habitable. Just like our Earth, it glows with blue light but its appearance is deceptive. On this super-Earth, winds blow at seven times the speed of sound. But the main danger is glass rains. Trillions of shards turn everything that gets in their way into powder. Gee, no, I'll have to pass on that one.